but welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a lovely session today, predominantly lying on our backs. Um, so I'll get you to have your strap handy and your blanket handy and come down onto your back, starting in Shavasana of all poses. Letting the arms and the legs rest beside you. Feeling into the breath. Feeling into the bones of the body. And allow your bones to start to sink. See if you can connect to the movement of your heart. The movement of your blood. Feel into each slow, deep breath. Allow the limbs to become heavy. Let your hands and your feet sink downward, taking the arms and the legs with them. Relaxing each part of your body as you surrender towards the earth. Notice the quality of your breath, the quality of your energy this morning. As you continue to breathe and continue to relax, feeling the pulsations of the heart and the blood. As we focus on our breathing, notice, noticing the peripheral of what's going on the rest of the body, but bringing your attention predominantly to the breath. Feel the expansion of the lungs as you breathe in and how this changes the shape of your torso, opening it outward. And then feel into the release of the exhalation, letting yourself drop a little bit further, a little bit deeper with each breath out. Keeping your attention on your breathing. See if you can find an even rhythm of your breath, where the in-breath and the out-breath are the same length. Encourage the breathing to be a little longer. So the in-breath and the out-breath are of the same duration, and both are increasing in their length, only to the point that you're comfortable. No need to strain. Simply encourage the mind the breath and the body to slow down. And then we're gonna keep working with our breath, this lovely, deep, slow, long breath, but bringing some movement in. We've got a couple of different ways of moving. The first one is bending the knees, placing the soles of the feet on the floor. And we're gonna to inhale to lift our hips up and raise our arms overhead. Exhale, lower gently down. Keep this movement going. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. You don't need to go very hard or very high. When we are trying to find our edge, it's not an extreme. It's just a place where we can feel sensation. And for you, that might not be a very big lift of the hips. It could be the butt's only just off the floor. Or maybe your arms don't even come all the way overhead. Letting the body ease into the movement and allowing yourself to be comfortable as you move with your breath. And then we're going to transition into a cat and cow, but lying on our back. If you want to keep going with this low bridge, dynamic low bridge, absolutely stay with that or return to it if you prefer it once you know what it, the next pose is. So starting with the hands interlocked behind the head, the elbows open to each side, the back relaxed. Take a breath in. And then as you exhale, tilt your pubic bone towards the head and the head towards the pubic bone. So you're shortening the front of the body and lengthening the back of the body, coming into a variation of cat pose. And then inhale, let the head and the elbows return to the floor and tilt your tailbone the other way as though you're trying to poke your tailbone to the floor and lift an arc through the lower back so that your hand can fit behind the lower back if possible. 
And then as you next exhale, come back into that cat variation. Elbows coming towards each other, chin towards pubic bone. And then inhale back into cow pose, lying on the earth. Keep going, transitioning between these, or return to that earlier pose, if that's better for your lower back. Try and get the movement coordinated with your breath. And if you want to bring a little bit more complexity in, as you next exhale and lift up, tilt a little so that the left elbow is towards the right knee. And then inhale back to the same art position, balance. And then exhale, this time right elbow to towards left knee. And inhale back through whichever variation is best for you today. Whatever we're doing, we're trying to find some space in our spine. We're trying to mobilize the small muscles and ligaments of the spine. If you're going from side to side with the elbows, one more time to each side. And then releasing the arms down beside you, stretch your legs out along the floor. Take three or four slow deep breaths here. You can stay in this position if it's better for you to have your legs stretched out, if there's any um, issues with knees or hips. Or bring the knees in towards the chest, either interlock the fingers over the shins or take hold of the opposite elbow, uh, sorry, wrist. Let the eyes fall closed and let yourself settle into this tiny little nugget position. It's a little bit like doing child's pose but lying on your back. If you really like the downward sensation of the head in child's pose, then feel free to swap over and roll onto your shins instead. If you're happy being face up, see if you can let go through the hip flexors. Try to relax that area in the crease of the hip. Let the weight of the legs sink toward the body. Not pushing, not forcing, but letting them be soft. Only thing holding you in place is the interlocked fingers or one hand holding the opposite wrist. Slow, deep breaths. Maintaining that rhythm that we started at the beginning of the class. And we breathe slowly, particularly if we were to lengthen our exhalation. It sends a signal to the body that we are safe and that we can move towards our parasympathetic nervous system, which is where we want to be functioning. It's where our body's basic functions can work to their optimal. We want to be digesting our food. We want our blood to be circulating into all the parts of the body, including the uh, soft tissues of the internal organs. During these times of pandemic and isolation, it's very easy to jump into the sympathetic nervous system. Even for those people that are quite introverted naturally, it's a strange way of living, different to what we're used to. We want to try and encourage our body back into the parasympathetic, back into rest and digest. And as you next exhale, release the hands. Let the feet return to the floor. We'll turn back over if you turned into child's pose. And a few more times, we're going to move dynamically through low bridge with the arms overhead, working in time with the breath opening up the front of the body, feeling that lovely openness across the front of the hip. When you next bring your arms down, pause. Just check that your feet are about hip width, hip distance apart. Open your arms out to either side. And then we're going to exhale, take our knees down to one side or let them drop towards that side. Inhale back to centre. And exhale, release or sway them down to the other side. So we're not forcing or pushing, but simply moving 
from one side to the other. Moving with the breath, the knees descend on an exhalation and come up on an inhalation. Letting the movement be a little bit like seaweed in the ocean. The legs swaying, not forcing or straining. And if you'd like to, you can start to turn your head the opposite way to the knees. As the knees come down to the right, the head turns to the left. As the knees come up to centre, the head comes to centre and then the head to the right as the knees go to the left. Finding that lovely rhythm with your breath. And then when you next bring your knees to centre, pause and take the feet together. So they're nice and close, the inner ankles touching and then continue that movement with or without the head. You might not go as far this time. It's not quite as much room to move. Let the knees continue to sway from side to side, turning the head if that works for you. Or keeping the head facing the ceiling if you prefer. One more time to each side. And then bring the knees back to centre. And then as you next exhale, let them release down to the right hand side and find a comfortable place for the legs to rest. If you want to prop yourself, you can use a blanket underneath the outer thigh or between the thighs. Let your arms remain out to the side if that's comfortable. You'll find a different position for the arms to be if you prefer. Let the head rest naturally. So I'm looking along my right arm in the same direction that my knees are. My neck's quite soft here. You could also turn your head to look up at the ceiling. Or if it's comfortable for your neck, you could look back along your left arm. It's definitely a more intense pose to be looking along the left arm. Take your attention back to your breathing. Breathing more fully and deeply, right down deep into the belly. We're stimulating the vis viscera of our internal organs. Helping to improve our digestive system ringing out the organs, increasing the blood flow, deep slow breaths. The class focus today is on nourishing the bones, the blood and the breath. So whenever you find yourself in stillness, notice how the breath is affecting your body. Check in that you are towards your edge but not past it finding that place of sensation but not extreme sensation gentle mild sensation taking the last three or four breaths on this side and then you're going to softly change to the other side bringing your legs back to center changing the arm position if you need to or stretching out the legs if you need a little break for the backs of the knees, perhaps giving the ankles a bit of rotation, circling one direction then the other. And then bringing your knees, bending your knees again, opening the arms back out and letting the knees drop gently to the left hand side. We're not trying to find our deepest twist. We're going to be doing a lot of twists in the session today. And so this is a really a way of really easing into it. Letting a little bit of side body open, opening happening, a little bit of opening through the outer hip of the top leg. Focusing more on softness and calmness of the breath and the mind. Breathing into the belly. Starting to acclimatize the body to the twists that will be coming shortly. Taking a deep breath in, begin to prepare yourself for movement. As you exhale, bringing the legs back to centre, readjusting on your mat, stretching your legs out, arms beside you. If you want to change the orientation, you might like to take the arms overhead instead. Deep, slow breath. As you next exhale, 
bending the knees again, bringing the feet to the floor, picking, picking up the right knee, bringing it in towards your chest. Hug it in for a moment and circle the ankle a couple of times, circling in one direction and then around the other way. You can keep that circling happening or come to stillness with the ankle and begin to circle your right knee. So although we're circling our right knee as though we were drawing a circle in the air, we're actually working into the coxal joint, our hip joint. Circling in one direction and then pausing and circling the other way. And then coming to stillness, take your right ankle and cross it over your left thigh, right up by the knee. So it's just the ankle bone that's crossing, making a figure four shape with our left. And let the right knee drop away from the right hip. So we're getting some space along the front uh, of the body and starting to work into that right hip. Now, if you can, if it's possible for you, bring your left foot off the floor and interlock your hands around the shin of that left leg. If that doesn't work for you, take hold of your strap or your uh, scarf or cord or whatever you happen to have and wrap that around your shin so it's around the left shin, so the right leg is completely free and not touched by the strap at all. That's the left shin that's got the strap around it. And holding onto the sides of the strap. Or of course, using your hands on the shin if that's possible for you. Let your shoulders relax. Try to take the tension out of the shoulder girdle. Keep the right foot a little bit flexed. In this way, we help to protect our knee. And notice if you tend to tilt a little bit towards the right and see if you can counter that by tilting slightly to the left as though you were going to come into a spinal twist with the right foot standing on the floor. And notice how when you tilt a little to the left, it increases the sensation around the area where piriformis gluteus medius, um, and all those other muscles around that space reside. Go into the outer hip space. Find that place that gives you some sensation, but not too much. And breathe. You can stay here if you've got enough going on for you. Remain as you are. Or if you'd like to take this into a slightly different orientation. The legs stay the same. Release your hands though, and simply curve 90 degrees to the left. So your right leg ends up stepping on the floor, and you might like to take your left hand and hold it around that foot to keep it in place. The strap's probably not needed at this point. Your right arm can open back behind you. Let your right shoulder descend to the floor. Or you can curl that around your head if that's a better position for your shoulder. So what's going on through the belly? We're really getting into that stage of starting to wring things out. This is the second uh, static twist that we've had in the class. And there's many more to come. So notice what's going on. Can you hear gurgling as your digestive system starting to wake up? We were in the pose to make it stronger. Don't go deeper, simply breathe more. Breathe a deeper breath in, a fuller breath in and a fuller breath out. Let your breath do all the work for you. And then you're ready to come out of this pose, release your hold on the foot, relax that right leg and bring yourself back to a balanced position. Stretch the arms and the legs out. So the arms might be better off beside you, finding that place that's right for you. And then your next exhale, bend the knees again. Let the arms come down beside you for a moment. They're not already there. And then bring the left knee in towards your chest, interlock your fingers over that shin, and start to circle the left ankle. 
circle in one direction and then the other. You might like to alternate your circles, taking two one direction and two the opposite way and then changing it around. Noticing if one ankle tends to click more than the other. Coming to stillness with the ankle, left hand to the left knee, begin to circle the left knee. We're getting into the left coxal joint now, lubricating the ball and socket of our hip. When you're ready to change direction, circling the other way. And then coming to stillness, cross the left ankle over the right knee or the right thigh. Let the left knee drop away from you. So there's space along the front of the body, along the front of the leg. Flex the left ankle. You don't have to be really intense here, but just flex it a little bit and try and maintain that shape. And then if you can, you can always stay in this position, but if you're able to, bring your right knee off the floor. You might have to lift your head and shoulders to see if you can interlock your hands behind the right shin or use the strap around that shin. So do whatever is right for your body that allows your shoulders to relax towards the floor. Let's the head release, nice strain. Notice how it's very easy to start to tilt to the left. Instead of that left tilt, see if you can tilt a little bit to the right. It's not a big movement, but you'll notice as your uh, legs tilt a little to the right, that the sensation around this whole left hip starts to increase. We're putting a little bit of pressure on the connective tissue, the fascial sacs around the muscles like piriformis, like gluteus medius, quadratus femoris. With each breath, let yourself sink in and relax a little more. And then you can stay here like we did on the other side, or if you'd like to, and I'm just gonna move to stay in picture, if you'd like to come into that gentle twist, start to curve your body more fully to the right so that you end up with your left foot standing on the floor, left arm open back behind you, and maybe the right hand holding your foot. Find a new, neutral position for the head. And feel how this is changing the shape of the internal organs. You might find there's a little bit of pressure on the liver, which lives predominantly behind the rib cage on the right side of the body. Focus your attention on whichever organ seems predominant for you and encourage your breath to that region. As you next exhale, we're going to release the hold on that left foot. Let the left leg join the right and roll completely onto your right side so that your arms are outstretched, that your, neck, your legs are bent, one resting on top of the other. And tuck your head in towards the arm so that you're making yourself into a funny little staple shape with the head tucked in. Or if it's more comfortable for you, you can get your blanket and pop it underneath your head so that it's supported at the top of the shoulders. So find that place that works best for you. Maybe let the arms relax, perhaps bend the elbows so that you're not taking tension through your elbows. The head could be tucked in. The head could rest on a cushion or a blanket. This is our rebound. Notice where you're holding tightness or tension. Perhaps you're not that used to being in this pose. See if you can settle more comfortably in the side-lying, slightly fetal position. And then as you next exhale, <clears throat> straighten your arms again. You can leave the blanket under your head if you were using one, or just lift your head back and rest it on the floor. And then straighten your top leg. So this is gonna be your left leg. Straighten that leg and see if you can take hold of the foot with your hand. Even for me, it's a bit of a stretch. 
So in which case, grab uh, whatever you're using as a strap and hook it around your foot and take hold of the strap. Make sure that your head is comfortable and you've got room behind you as well. We're going to inhale to raise the arm up. Exhale to take the hand back behind you. I haven't quite got the space. Inhale back up and exhale the left hand to the right hand. Do that a couple more times. Inhale the arm up. Exhale the hand back. Inhale the arm up. And exhale the hand in front of you. Keep going. One more cycle or more if you enjoy this movement, this dynamic opening. You can totally continue with that. Or if you'd like to, the next time you inhale the arm up and exhale it back, let yourself settle into the twist position. So either dynamically moving the arm, or letting yourself rest in a twist, noticing what's going on along the length of that left leg, not just the outer hip, but the outer hamstrings, and even the IT band is probably getting a little bit of stimulation. If it's not comfortable for your leg to be straight, you can let it release down along the floor so that the leg can stay straight, but it's not quite so intense. If there's not much going on in that leg and you want a little bit more, bring the leg a little higher, utilizing your strap and holding onto either the foot or the strap. Make sure that the head and neck is comfortable. And then let yourself sink in. We're not trying to get any deeper. We're letting our breath do all the work for us. Allow the eyes to close. Allow the shoulders and arms to relax. Making sure that left shoulder is comfortable, that you're not placing too much strain on the front compartment of your shoulder. You can always curve that arm around your head or let the hand rest at your waist or down beside the body rather than back behind it. The bones settling down into the shape. We're encouraging ease. We're not straining to get anywhere. Sinking into the shape of our bones, the movement of our blood, the flow of our breath. And then as you next exhale, bring that left arm back over so you return to your lying on your side rather than twisting the spine and then stretch the right leg to meet the left so the bent leg comes up so that both legs are straight and you're in this little staple shape and then from here we're going to keep the right leg where it is the one that was bent and is now straight and we're going to bend the top knee and open that leg up, stepping the left foot on the floor. So you're now in a very odd half staple type shape. You can again inhale, lift the left arm, bring it back behind you and open the chest towards the ceiling. So you're more lying with your back on the floor rather than a twist. We're now getting into the adductors, the area along the front of the thigh. If you'd like to, you can take your strap and hook it around that right foot. And I'm just lifting it up to show you and hold on to the strap. So you've got an anchor point for that right leg. If it's not comfortable, you can bend it a little bit or slide it away from you if you need to. So find the place you've got some sensation along the adductors, the inner thigh, but not too much. And the left leg is really just getting out of the way. There's not a whole lot going on with that left leg for most people, although you might get some sensation through the hip flexors because the knee is bent. Once you've found your shape, sink into it. Relax the glutes if you've got tension in your left glute. See if you can let that go. Taking a deep inhalation here. As you exhale, we're going to return to the position with the both legs straight and together 
and the arms straight too. Take your strap and place it around both feet now. And continue holding that strap with the uh, left, sorry, the right arm. And then inhale, lift your left arm up. Exhale, open it back behind you. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, bring it back in front. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, take it back behind. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, lift up. You can keep going if you like the movement. Or well, the next time you bring the arm back behind you, let yourself pause here. See if you can find a relaxed straight leg position. You can use the hand on the strap to help keep the legs in place so that they can let go and relax. Find a neutral position for your head. And breathe into your belly. Maybe let the eyelids fall closed or soften your gaze. Deep, slow breaths. You're not trying to get anywhere. You're not trying to achieve anything apart from breathing, calming, nourishing. I'm sure how strong the microphone uh, is on my computer, but I've got a whole lot of gurgling going on. These poses are fantastic for stimulating our digestion. And for those of us that are a little more housebound than others, depending on if you're able to get out and walk without uh, contact with other people, you might be feeling that you need the stimulation through the belly this movement of the body into these poses. And then as you next exhale, bend the knees, release the strap from the legs. Bring yourself back around to lie on your back with the legs and the arms extended. With or without the pillow or blanket under your head. Let yourself release completely to the floor. Notice the difference between the right side and the left side. And as you next exhale, bend your knees towards your chest. Bring your knees in towards your chest and then take them down to the left hand side of your mat. Bring your right arm over. I'm just going to turn sideways so I can still speak to the camera. Bring your right arm around. So you're lying fully on your side. Knees, legs bent. Arms either outstretched or bent elbows. Head can be resting on the floor on a blanket or tucked in between the arms. And then you're ready to start into the first of these three twists. Straighten your right leg, your top leg. Maybe taking hold of the foot or maybe wrapping the strap around the foot and holding it with the left arm. As you inhale, raise the right arm up. As you exhale, take that arm back behind you. Inhale, lift the arm up. Exhale, bring it back in front. Let the spine get used to this movement of the twist by moving slowly and softly with the breath. Making sure that your neck and head is supported and that there's no strain. You can keep going. If you really like moving dynamically, continue with this flowing arm, this vinyasa with the upper body and the spine. When you're ready to settle into the stillness, begin to sink into having that arm open back behind you, relaxing through the shoulders, soft belly. Find an appropriate position for your right leg. Higher will be intenser, lower will be more gentle. 
I think I probably should have said more intense. I'm not sure intenser is actually a word. Focus on sending the breath to anywhere in the body that it's needed. So wherever you feel tension or tightness, that's where the breath should travel. And I realise that we don't literally have a lung in our outer hip. But the intent is there to send the focus and the breath, to send ease, to send nourishment. As you next exhale, bring the right arm back across and straighten the left leg to meet the right leg. So now you're more of a little staple shape with uh, both feet together and change the strap onto the left foot. So the right foot is free. And then we're gonna open ourselves up and step the right foot to the floor with the right leg bent. So we're coming into this weird half staple. It's not quite a spinal twist because the back's more resting completely on the floor. It's much more about the inner thigh, the inner groin. And along this channel, or the inner thigh runs three channels, the three yin channels, the, the spleen, the liver, and the kidney. And the corresponding yang channels each either run on the top of the thigh, the outer thigh, or the back of the thigh. Make sure the shoulders are relaxed. And once you've found your shape, let yourself sink into it, releasing through the buttocks, relaxing the legs, the belly, the arms, the head, and the neck. Every time you notice yourself losing focus on your breathing, gently and without judgment, bring your attention back to your breath, back to your body. And as you next exhale, bring your right leg back to stretch along the left. So both legs are now straight and out to the side. The arms are straight as well. You might like to have a little pause here, just thinking about life, making sure that the feet are comfortably resting one on top of the other. Use a blanket if you need one for under the head. It can be really nice to have that little bit of height so that the neck's not getting compressed. Both feet together with the strap hooked around both of the feet. And then as you inhale, lift the arm up. As you exhale, open it back behind you. Inhale, lift the arm up. And exhale, bring it forward. You can keep going as many times as you want. My body's telling me it's ready to settle in. So I'm going to open the arm back behind me. Find a comfortable place for my head. And sink into the stillness. Relaxing the legs. Take the legs a little lower or a little more away from you if you need to make this a little softer, a little easier. Bring them a little higher if you need to make it more intense. So you want to try and find that place, that Goldilocks position, not too heavy, not too light. Relax the belly. Soften the gaze and then close the eyelids. And let yourself sink into this final supine twist. I think I'm adding it up correctly to say there's been five twists this class or a variation of a twist. Let yourself release into this last one. Taking a deep breath in. Begin to prepare your body for movement. Releasing the hold of the strap. Bending the knees. And then carefully rolling or returning to your back. 
Let the legs stretch out along the floor. Let the arms rest down beside you. As you next exhale, bring the arms up overhead, reaching them above the head. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, we're curving ourselves into banana asana, walking the hands and the legs the feet and the arms to the right hand side, curving the body into the C shape, lateral flexion of the spine, stimulation to the IT band that's on the outside of the left thigh. Once you've found your shape, let yourself relax here. And check in if there's enough sensation. If it's not quite enough, you might need to cross your left ankle over your right. And then once more, relax. Of finding a place that lets you open through the left side of the body without strain. Taking a deep breath in here. If your ankles are crossed, uncross them and carefully bring yourself back to center. Letting your arms rest down beside you, the body balanced and straight along the mat. Slow, deep breaths. Noticing any difference between the left side and the right side. And when you're ready to come onto the left, reach the arms back overhead and begin to curve yourself to the left hand side or the opposite side to what you just did. Curling the arms around. You can take hold of your elbows and stretch the arms out. You can cross your right ankle over the left, keeping the buttocks on the floor. The whole of the back side of the body is touching the earth. We're not tilting or curving. We are curving. <laughs> We're curving the side body. We're not twisting. Try to let go as much as possible. The more you hold muscular tension in this pose, the less you'll be influencing the fascial sacs. And those thick bands of fascia like the IT band that runs down the outer thigh. So you wanna try and let go as much as possible. Allow yourself to sink in, sink down. Take a deep breath in here. If your ankles are crossed, uncross them. And begin to bring yourself back to center, releasing the arms down, taking a few breaths, maybe bringing your knees in towards your chest, taking your time. When we hold ourselves in these positions for a long time, we need to let our tissues recoil. So we want to let them gently adjust back to where they're comfortable being. You can rock from side to side or circle the knees. And then when you're ready to, set yourself up for Shavasana. So that might be that you want to take a little bit longer time in a little nugget, rocking and rolling. It might be that you're ready to stretch out for Shavasana. Set yourself up so you're very comfortable. Perhaps a blanket under the backs of the knees, maybe. Um, a blanket over top of you, particularly if you're feeling yourself cooling down. Yin is a very cooling practice. And so we want to try and make ourselves as comfortable and warm as possible so that the body temperature doesn't drop any lower. See your whole body starting to sink down into the floor. Feel the earth catching you. Let each of your toes relax and sink down. Let the feet become soft, the heels gentle against the earth. Relax the ankles, the shins, the knees and the thighs. Let your hips release. Allow the weight of your leg and the legs in their entirety to rest against the earth.
off in the front body and relax it against the back body. Let your shoulders release. Feel the scapula, the shoulder blades sitting comfortably. Soft, relaxed. Arms heavy. Fingers lightly curled. Soften the throat and the neck. Let the weight of the head sink down. Whole body completely relaxed. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Just breathe. Releasing your focus on your breathing, begin to prepare your body for movement. Starting small wriggling fingers and toes, building up to stretching our arms and legs. Bending up your knees, and when you feel ready to, either rolling to your side or making your way directly up to sitting. In honour of your practice, Namaste. Namaste.